Matthias, welcome. Welcome to Italy. Welcome to Auto Officina Bonini, who is uh, hosting us today. Thank you, Vito. Thank you very much for being here. We are here for our third episode of our Ask the Insiders series. And uh, who better than you, uh, Matthias Bartz, the writer and author of uh, the Dino Compendium, who, which is a Bible, really, for, uh, for these models, from 206 GT all the way to the 246 GTSs. Um, today, uh, I think we, we will try and focus on the 246 GTS production sure. and uh, ask you how many, as many little details and uh, interesting information as, uh, as we can. And um, yeah, I mean, to, to start, start us off, tell us how you got into these cars and why you love them so much and why they're special to you. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Guido, for having me here and um, to be able uh, to talk about uh, Ferrari Dinos, uh, which is uh, my passion for many, many years now. Um, yeah, um, Ferrari produced uh, in total uh, 4,067 of these uh, lovely cars. Um, the, the, uh, they split it down to uh, three models, basically. Um, uh, the first one was uh, the 2-liter engine 206 GT. Um, this car was introduced uh, at the Turin Motor Show in uh, 1967. And they started production uh, of these cars in uh, 68, and the first cars got delivered in August uh, 68. Um, the, the, the 206 GT is quite special because um, very low production numbers, just 154 cars, and it has a full aluminum body. Um, the engine has 180 horsepower, and um, with uh, the pressure uh, coming from Porsche, from the rival Porsche, um, they, uh, shortly after they introduced uh, the 206 GT, they decided to increase the engine size to 2.4 liter, um, which also increased uh, horsepower to 195 um, um, to keep up um, with the performance uh, the 911 uh, was delivering. Um, the, uh, they, they started in 69 with the 246 GT. Um, the 246 GT was basically the main model. Uh, 2,631 cars got produced of, of, of the coupe. And then later, um, because uh, especially the American market put some pressure on Ferrari, um, they finally decided uh, to bring in uh, open top car like uh, the Porsche Targa was very popular in, in the US, uh, so Ferrari had to do something about it and they introduced the, the GTS Spider. Um, God bless them. God bless the them. car we have here, um, we have a left hand drive UP model here um, in uh, Verde Pino Metallizzato. And um, this, uh, this car uh, actually um, was introduced in 71, but they started production in 72 and uh, produced overall 1,282 cars. Fantastic. And um, so these cars weren't, weren't uh, in aluminum anymore? No, uh, not in aluminum anymore. Uh, with the uh, introduction of the 2.4 liter engine, um, they changed to a steel body. Right at the beginning, the very first uh, 246 cars, the L-series model, they still had the doors and every hood in aluminum. But even within the L-series, to the end, uh, that changed uh, to just, they just kept the front bonnet in aluminum and, and, so and that was front taken front. over to the M and E-series. And we have an E-series car, E-series GTS car here with us today. Fantastic. So um, can you tell us again how many 246 GTSs were made and uh, yeah. what, the, what was the difference between the right and drive cars yeah. uh, and sure. European and... Sure. Uh, American As I market. said, in total, 1,282 cars, and that splits down in just 402 cars of the left-hand drive European model, the car we have here. Uh, we had uh, 257 right-hand drive cars produced. Maranello Concessionaires uh, was the biggest dealership worldwide for Dinos uh, in that period of time. And um, uh, the US market, who mainly demanded this car, um, uh, they produced uh, 627 cars for that market that was for Canada and, and the USA. Great. And what were the, the biggest differences in the, in the US models 
And um, in your opinion, in your opinion, do they uh, make the car a little bit less desirable? And yeah, what changed really? Actually, quite a, quite a few differences. Uh, the most obvious one is uh, the side markers. Um, uh, we have a little indicator here in the front. Uh, the US models have big side markers in the front and in the back wing, uh, uh, pointing towards the side. Uh, this was for regulation reasons. Um, also, uh, s there were a lot of safety reasons uh, with the US models. Um, the bumpers, um, the bumper mountings were much stronger. Bumpers actually are the same, but the bumper mountings mm. were much stronger. Uh, they also um, introduced um, a protect bar in the doors, uh, which uh, helped oh. when it comes to a crash uh, to, to be more safe um, uh, inside the car. And also in the back, uh, the trunk is a, is a little bit smaller because of, of, of two bars coming from, from the mounting side of the bumpers and uh, to, to minimize impact uh, if you have a crash from behind. Uh, um, the engine was a little bit less powerful also with the US models. Uh, this is because of um, uh, the um, um, smog pump, uh, which, was, um, which was delivered uh, with the US models uh, to met uh, environmental um, um, regulations. regulations, exactly, um, especially in California, this was an issue. Um, was the main issue, Ferrari didn't sell any, hardly any M-series 246 cars to America, and even the early E-series were not sell, uh, sold to America. Um, there, was, there was a gap of about one year, one and a half years, where they didn't sell almost any car to America because oh. these cars were officially not uh, be able to register in the UK, in the US market at that point of time. Of course. Good. So what do you think, uh, yeah. what do you think the, um, the power out output difference was between the US and the uh, Europe and uh, European cars? That wasn't specified by Ferrari, but uh, we estimated about 10 to 15 horsepower less. Okay. So 195, maybe down to 85, 80, something which, like that. Which, yeah. you, which you can feel a little bit. You can feel a little bit, it's not dramatic, because 195 horsepower was the official number for, uh, basically given by Ferrari. Um, to be very honest, um, I think hardly any Dean who had a 90 and a half five mm -hmm. horsepower. <laughs> um, today, if you uh, do an engine overhaul, you can easily achieve 200, 210 uh, without any problems. But in those days, I think there was, and each engine was a little bit different. Uh, it varied anyway from 180 to 195 horsepower. Of course. And, um, and how much does this car weigh? I mean, um, the GTS weighs about uh, 1,250 kilogram, okay. and uh, the uh, 206, for example, with the full aluminium body, which must, was much lighter, uh, was just uh, one ton, uh, about 1,000 kilogram. Of yeah. course. Um, and um, tell us a little bit about the about the colors of these cars. I think. Uh, Everybody that has seen a few Dinos knows there are many colors. How yeah. many? How many were offered in total? How many colors have you seen? First of all, any of these cars look great in any color. To be honest, agreed. And um, Ferrari uh, delivered uh, more than 50 different uh, colors on on, on these wow. cars. Um, there were some standard colors um, like Rosso Chiaro, Rosso Dino. Rosso Dino, for example, was introduced with the 206. And um, because Enzo wanted a different red for the Dino than for his 12-cylinder cars, he, he also named the car Dino and not a Ferrari because it wasn't a 12-cylinder car. This was quite a big issue for Enzo. Yeah. And, and so the, the orange red uh, became Rosso Dino, but also was also available on, on any other 12-cylinder yeah, okay. cars at that point of time. Yeah. Um, as I said, more than, than 50 cars, some really, really special cars. Uh, one customer ordered uh, his Dino in uh, Signal Porsche Orange, uh, orange uh, which was um, very special because this was just an official Porsche color. He owned a 911 and he wanted his Dino in the same color and Enzo said, no problem, we're gonna do that. Uh, we keep our customers happy. If you pay for it. If you pay for it, <laughs> obviously. Of course. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, what is this color that we're looking at today? Uh, the color is uh, Verde Pino Metallizzato. Uh, it's very unique because out of the 402 cars produced as European L-Series model, the, the model we have here um, uh, today, uh, this is the only one in Verde Pino Metallizzato. 
Uh, one of my favorite colors, I have to say. Um, I also prefer dark blue, um, blue not a metallizator or blue Sera metallizator. But I was al always dreaming also of a Verde Pino uh, metallizator Dino. Um, I couldn't achieve it yet, but um, I'm very happy uh, to present this car here today. Um, I'm a big fan of that color. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It's fantastic. I mean, love to see all these all these pure colors. Of course, this this car was born like this and is original in this color, yeah. but uh, many cars now today are getting restored to their original colors and Guido, it's lovely to Guido, see. Guido, very unique. Yeah. Very unique to see a car uh, still in original paint and orig original color, but especially original paint. Because um, I can tell you 90% of these cars got repainted in the 80s or 90s. Resell red. Resell mm -hmm. red. The, but th that was in favor, uh, especially in the 80s and in the 90s. Um, uh, we started now, it started I think 10, 12 years ago, maybe with the introduction of the Dino Compendium. People got aware of all the different colors and also the taste changed uh, back to, 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 to special colors, um, uh, elegant colors. And so many cars have been repainted back uh, now to, 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 to the original um, color, yeah. um, which I think is, uh, is, is um, very good to have uh, because just that red, we had too many red. Yeah. I, remember, I remember meetings uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, we had meetings, especially in Switzerland, Dino meetings. Uh, there were uh, 40 cars and 35 were red and, and five had a different color. Yeah. So th this has changed now. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic because yeah. Yeah, for me, in these cars, one of my favorite things about Dinos is all of the variety that you have in these fantastic pair of colors. Yeah. I mean, the Verde yeah. Germoglio, yeah. the Senape. The Some really interesting 70s period colors. Like you said, Verde Germoglio, Giallo Senape is also one color I like very, very much. Actually, these... You have a few of those, yeah, don't you? <laughs> I have two of them, uh, two Dinos in that color. Um, it, it, the, these two colors actually were introduced uh, with uh, production uh, begin of the M series car. Okay. So that was in 1970s. Uh, so you were not able to have a 206 or an L series Dino in, in, in that in that color originally. Um, this color was particular in favor with the German client base. I can tell you this is, uh, is a big split in terms of taste worldwide. And uh, Auto Becker um, imported about 170 cars to yeah. Germany. Um, um, was not one of the biggest importers worldwide, but um, most of these cars he imported were in these crazy colors, like uh, Nouveau Jello Fly, this uh, this orange red, uh, oh sorry, orange yellow, yellow. Um, the um, uh, the Rosso Dino, which was also a period color, Giallo Zenape, Verde Gemolio, very popular in Germany. Italy, um, like this car, always, always very elegant, uh, mainly dark colors, Rosso mm -hmm. Bordeaux, um, uh, blue, not a metallizato, Verde Pino, like this car. Um, a lot of these uh, um, very elegant dark colors uh, um, put on a Dino delivered to Italy. And uh, America also different again, mm -hmm. um, a, a variety, uh, a, a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything, quite a mix. Eh? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, and yeah, I mean, if, if we can get into the even nerdier stuff, yeah. uh, if I may say, yeah. um, what, are the, what are the first things that you look at uh, when you see a Dino, whether on the road or uh, at a mechanical shop like this one or at an event, mm -hmm. uh, what tells you that a Dino is solid and uh, yeah. also, which which number stampings do you look at? Uh, yeah. what, tell us your sort of your. Uh, the first thing I look at is authenticity. I think authenticity is absolutely key now and is also value driving. Yeah, um, we are very lucky. We have a very authentic car here. Only some minor changes from the delivery in 1972. When I came into this garage this morning, the first thing I, I, I spotted were the rims. Because you always, even today with modern cars, you look at rims yeah. first, uh, quite often, quite often. And um, here uh, we can see almost untouched original rims in, in the original grayish color. It's not a, it's not a pure silver mm -hmm. they were delivered. They had a grayish touch. And it's very nice uh, to see these untouched rims uh, with hardly any marks, still in original paint. 
um, because today is very difficult um, to recreate uh, the um, rims color the because there is no there are no records of, of, of the color. There is, um, there, 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 we don't have any color samples for the rims. So um, to see them um, as they are here was, uh, was quite a pleasure. Um, you were also, telling me about the, yeah, about the um, yes. Fiat uh, branding on yeah, the rims. Yeah, um, they, they still have the Fiat branding on here with this car. This was one of the very last car who had the Fiat branding on because um, uh, the, Fiat, uh, the, the Dino was also produced with Fiat. They had the Fiat Dino Coupe and the Fiat Dino Spider. They started with two liter like Ferrari did and then uh, um, uh, topped up to 2.4 liter also. Um, they shared the rims basically. So um, you always have the Fiat script on the rims. But the production for the uh, latest uh, Fiat model, the Spider 2.4 liter, stopped early in 1972. And then uh, just Ferrari uh, took um, all the, um, the, stock. the stuff which was, was left in terms of rims and put them on the car. And when that uh, ran out, um, um, uh, they, they, had to new they had to order new ones. And, and the new ones uh, became a Dino script uh, instead of the Fiat script. So only the very late. Uh, only dinos, only uh, the very late Dinos. We can't precise say a chassis number where that started, but around 5,000, uh, I think, uh, um, these, uh, these new rims were introduced. Not new rims, they just had a different script. A different script. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, when you, when you start diving into sort of the, the details and the, the stampings, yeah. what, do you look at, what do you look at first? Yeah. Um, first thing also, uh, shall we go on the front to show yes, it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, the first thing which is always very obvious if, when cars are untouched is um, the sills. Because the sills are always done. And you have a seam here, you see a seam yeah. here. And this seam is original from the factory. Wow. Um, and um, when these cars got uh, restored, especially in the 80s and in the 90s, yeah, Paint over. Yeah, just mm -hmm. filler over, and 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 the and 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 the seam disappeared. Yeah, a and as I said, uh, the overall authenticity. Obviously, we check all the numbers: engine number, gearbox number, the body numbers. One body number is very easy to find in these cars. We open the boot. Yeah. And um, here, from inside, stamped in the in the hinges in the boot hinges, you find the body number. In this case, is uh, 1100, yeah, which is matching to this car. Funny, funny place to put a body. Funny number. place. <laughs> Sometimes these are non-original any longer because yeah. the hinges were worn out and they put new in. Then the number is not there. Um, maybe you can open the the engine bay. Sure. Um, I show you another place, uh, a very important place where you to from. Oh no, the middle one. Yeah. Um, in the engine bay, um, there's one body number stamped in the mounting bracket here for the coolant water tank. Okay. You just have to take um, the nut off there and the bolt and, and then it will appear. And this is the case through all series. Only very, very early 206 didn't have it there. So um, this is the spot um, to check. Um, okay. first. Okay. You also find the body number in many, many other places. You find them in the doors, uh, um, stamped in the doors. Most often you can't see them because the paint is over. Uh, um, it is, uh, it is, uh, sometimes it is under the dash. For example, the dash is marked with the body number, yeah. uh, just painted on. Um, we have in, in some comb parts, uh, we find body numbers in some Panels, we find body numbers, panels like the cover inside the, the interior, cover of the A pillar uh, in, in the front of the doors, for example, have a body number. So there are many, many places. And um, if, it, if it comes to a GT, you all also find uh, the body number stamped in the, in, in the roof liner, for example. There's, uh, there's a bar. Um, uh, if you take that off on the, on the back side, uh, you, find, you find that. In the early cars, there are much more body numbers okay. than in the later cars. And then when the GT4 was introduced in 73, 74, uh, it became more popular within Ferrari to put more uh, uh, body number stampings on the car. 
Uh, so e even late GT4s produced in 79 uh, and 1980s had uh, much more body numbers almost in every part again. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And um, I mean, looking at the, looking at the engine, uh, yeah. Have you seen many cars with replacement engines, or uh, was it was it is it is it common? Uh, is it a big issue with, uh, with Dinos, or is not a big issue, but it is common. Uh, it, it can happen, so you have to check the numbers for yeah. sure. Because in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, nobody cared about matching number. Uh, the engine was down, and a new engine was put in. Um, nobody looked at numbers. Um, the, 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 the awareness was not there. Sure. Yeah? That completely changed in the last, let's say, 10, 15 years. Eh? Today, um, this is also um, a value thing. If you have a matching number car, it's probably worth 10, 15% more than a non-matching uh, non um, um, car. Yes. Um, so um, these, these And where do you check that? Yeah, that where do you check uh, the to check the engine number uh, with, a, with, with a Dino is quite difficult. Eh? We start with the gearbox number, that's quite easy. Yeah. Uh, if you lift up the car and you look from uh, underneath um, in, in, the, in the mounting bracket of the engine, um, you find the number stamped on here on the right uh, side, uh, back side. Um, the, engine, uh, the, engine number is, uh, the engine number is actually stamped um, in, in the top area of um, yeah. the block, just below the uh, cylinder head of the rear side. Here, you can, sometimes you can spot it from above here, but normally you have to lift up the car, you have to take uh, the wheel off, and, and also the inner wheel, and then you have a better view on, onto the block, and you can see the number. Uh, it's uh, normally not so easy to check. Not uh, very convenient, uh, no. Not on the street. The, sh the chassis number, on the other hand, yeah. is a little bit easier. Over chassis here. number is a little bit easier. Um, the chassis number stamping actually varies. Um, okay. um, we have four different types of chassis number depending on, on when the car was produced. Uh, here in this case, um, this is um, the late version um, and um, uh, you can immediately see here um, this is untouched because Ferrari actually when they uh, painted um, um, the frame, they put a tape on the number mm -hmm. and left uh, the number unpainted. And, and uh, this, is, uh, this is very, uh, very much the case here on this car. So uh, absolutely untouched. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's very insightful. Uh, while we keep walking around the car, yeah. what are some little uh, interesting original details that you see that perhaps have gotten lost on most other Dinos? And uh, also, what are maybe some little things that you see that have been changed on this car? Yeah. Um, very little has been changed on this car, I have to say. Um, 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 we find just very, very minor changes. We come back to that later on. We start with um, some important uh, details for the GTS, which you normally don't find. And the first thing, we come to the uh, sun visors. The sun visors yes. are, are here, in, uh, hidden in, in this bar. And uh, they are actually attached like this to the uh, to the front windshield, and the rubber here, the rubber part, always missing, yeah. right? always yeah. missing, and they are in, yeah, untouched, they untouched, dry out, un yeah. dry out. They got lost. They fall off, and 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 uh, they are, yeah, unused, like brand new here. Very nice, very okay. nice to have. Also very nice to have the original steering wheel. Um, the original steering wheel uh, is lost also quite often uh, because it is quite fragile. Mm -hmm. It breaks easily mm -hmm. if, if you drive uh, the car a bit more uh, sportive. And um, here uh, we still have the original steering wheel with the original horn button. Horn button is also something which is quite often non-original because many owners put a Ferrari, Ferrari. Cavallino horn button into their Dinos in the 70s or 80s, yeah, which is a no-go today. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. Lovely steering wheel. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Matthias, you were telling me about yeah. the, the deflector here. Is it as per original or? No, it's actually not original. Um, that is an improvement uh, that was changed in time. Um, because this is a, a problem which quite often occurs. Eh? Um, normally, um, the uh, little levers, I have them here, the original ones, to this car. Um, okay. They are actually, actually just glued to the glass, 
and under pressure um, uh, they they fail uh, when it when it's get very very hot yeah and then just they just fell into the into the car and um, many many dino owners modified this um, uh, in the past and uh, still today um, um, some people do that because uh, they actually just have not been practical mm -hmm. yeah uh, we'll, we'll put this back on anyways you, you put that back on yeah perfect <laughs> yeah. yeah what i also spotted was here in the back of the car. Unfortunately, we don't have the original Dino script here. It says Dino GTS, uh, but um, all GTS uh, were basically uh, stamped Dino GT, like the coupes, mm -hmm. uh, for no reasons. I have no idea why Ferrari didn't change it, because uh, the model name changed, and it should, should be like this, Dino uh, GTS. But uh, that was actually never the case. Um, but these are easy to find. Even new old stock are available. And this is a quick change, uh, no, no big deal. And otherwise, I can find hardly anything on this car. I was even surprised to see the original wiper blades on this car from 72. I think they <laughs> haven't been touched, in, wow. to be honest. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It hasn't seen much rain, perhaps, in Sicily. Uh, <laughs> probably no rain. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh, if we if we start looking at the at the interior and at the dashboard, yes, uh, do you see all the original instruments other than the steering wheel, which we've talked about? Uh, I mean, I see that tag over there. Very much original. Very much original. You have the original carpet, seats. Everything is still original. The only thing I only spotted I only spot two little little things. Um, the cigar lighter is a little bit more modern version. I would, would change that to the original one. Uh, these are easy to mm -hmm. find because they were used on other cars like Alfa Romeo and so on and so on. And um, the tech, the, the tech for, the, for the clock is unbelievable because this is a really, really rare item. <laughs> yeah. you, can hardly, you can hardly find them and normally they were immediately thrown away. Um, they were the same on the 12-cylinder models, I think. But um, yeah, I've never seen it before. N uh, yeah, uh, very rare item to be honest. A very rare Just item. Yeah. yeah. Um, the dashboard is still in original uh, condition. Um, all the seals are original, unchanged. Um, um, if it comes to uh, to um, to the black here, um, the black uh, which is which is paint, painted in the openings, also in the in the openings edges of the bonnets, and also in the lower part of the car, is exceptional because this uh, was uh, the very very first model with the round air intakes in the front, yeah, the front. That, that was changed during ECS production, and this was one of the very first cars who got it just after the the holiday break in August uh, 72. Almost exactly 50 years ago. Almost exactly 50 years ago. And um, with this body change in the front, they also changed the line of the lower black. The line used to be on the edge of the seal, okay. and it went up just a fraction below the door now. And this is perfectly original, and many, many, many uh, people think this is uh, fake, is not real, and, and, and also um, uh, when people restaurate uh, these cars, they always go on the edge on the seal, is uh, not correct for this car, so this is really untouched, it's amazing. Very uh, interesting. Uh, uh, really and looking amazing. at the, look at the, at the interior material, yeah. is it hard to restore these cars with the, with the vinyl? I heard uh, it, maybe. Depends. Eh? Um, depends, uh, depends on the color. Um, uh, two colors are easily available these days. That is uh, black, Nero uh, 161, and it's beige uh, 430, um, which is the color we have here. Mm -hmm. um, the material is still available, and uh, here, especially here in Italy, they still have the forms to create these fake stitches yeah. here. They are actually glued onto yeah. the material. It's not the real stitches. Eh? Um, so that is possible. If it comes to different colors, like uh, the, the red one, or especially blue, or marone, for example. Marone is very difficult. The material is not available at all. The only thing you, you can do is you can try to color it with, with some yeah, paint, paint, paint or paint it. Um, that, that makes it very, very hard uh, to recreate. Eh? Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and uh, I mean, I heard that this car was delivered with sponge seat covers. Yeah. Had you ever uh, heard about that? Yeah, or? I've heard about sponge seat covers. You've heard about they're, everything. They're, they're actually quite rare. 
Um, they were very available um, with the factory, um, but that wasn't an uh, official option. Um, but I've I've um, I've seen them on on on, on few cars. Um, very very rare these days because you can just. Uh, put them on and they have uh, little clamps which you put behind here and yeah. then you have the middle section is then covered with yeah. uh, cloth basically and um, uh, they got thrown away after two or three four years uh, when they got dirty or whatever mm -hmm. so very very uh, few only survived uh, um, I have to say yeah very interesting very interesting um, yeah I guess one Maybe one last word on uh, on anything else you may see. I mean, do were the cars delivered with these mirrors or? Uh, or de not? De depending on markets, eh? okay. um, as this is a mid seventy two car here, um, um, they normally didn't have a, a side mirror, uh, especially not for the Italian market. Mm -hmm. The Italian market had no side mirror. The Italian market had no hazard, for example no hazard switch um, that was but that was necessary for germany for example yeah. that was uh, uh, necessary for the us market so that was really depending on markets uh, there are quite especially in 72 73 74 there were quite a few differences between markets uh, um, and and ferrari had to take care and uh, did it and in this case we have a very pure dino uh, european model italian delivery this is actually the car you are looking for at the moment because um, this is really pure. Yeah? Uh, here you have only one option, uh, uh, two options coming with the car. One option was the uh, Metallizzato color, is yeah. an option, yeah? Yeah. was an option at extra cost. And it has uh, power windows, yeah? uh, which, was sure. which, which was also an option. Yeah. I think that is that is very nice. Um, you don't have an air conditioning, for example, here within this car, but you don't need one um, because you can take the roof off. But I can tell you, especially all the US models and also the GTS, um, the Americans ticked all option boxes. Eh? Yeah. So they always had air conditioning, power windows, you name it. Yeah. Um, a very rare option these days um, is um, the flared um, uh, wings, actually, with the um, yeah. uh, seven and a half uh, Campagnolo rims. Um, this is something very special. Um, it is called in combination with Daytona seats, which were also available for this car, but these are standard seats here in, 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 in this car. Uh, were called uh, shares and flares, um, but uh, this uh, shares and flares option actually doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. eh? Ferrari didn't offer a shares and flares option. This is this is something which was made up later on uh, by the market. Um, there were two options: Daytona seats and um, the wider housing wheels. They were called uh, with the seven and a half Campagnolo rims. Well, you're uh, you made me uh, want to go for a drive. So should yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> Let's With do it. pleasure. Yeah, Let's, yeah. Do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. automobili che ho guidato quando ho iniziato la mia carriera lavorativa era proprio una Dino 246 nera che era di un'azienda importantissima di Reggio Emilia e allora ho provato delle sensazioni incredibili. Dopo qualche mese eh, abbiamo avuto l'opportunità di diventare officina autorizzata Ferrari perché ormai sono più di 40 anni che abbiamo l'officina autorizzata Ferrari e naturalmente provavo negli anni 70 automobili che erano nuove, dal tagliando alla manutenzione ordinaria e questa mi dà la stessa sensazione di quando guidavo le automobili che a quei tempi erano nuove, perché un volante, uno sterzo preciso, un cambio che sincronizza benissimo, un motore che risponde alla perfezione, ha una coppia incredibile. Sono un uomo 
sei riuscito a fare riferendomi ad Enzo Ferrari, naturalmente al commentatore che ho avuto la, la fortuna di conoscere personalmente quel giorno credo di essere arrivato a casa con due linee di febbre dall'emozione.